one of the first things I'm doing with, with our new patients is going through exactly how a bite should fit together. That allows me to compare their situation to what the ideal is. And the ideal is always our goal and objective at the end for every patient. So what I'm gonna do is kind of show you how I wanna see a bite fitting together. And that allows people to kind of assess themselves and, and their family members and get an idea of what might be uh, wrong with their bite. So what I wanna see, ideally is the upper jaw should accept the lower jaw like a door frame accepts a door. So all the upper teeth should bite on the outside of the lower teeth. When we're biting all the way down, we should see the full length of the lower front teeth. So you shouldn't bite too deep over those lower front teeth, and you also shouldn't have an opening in the front. Then as far as how the bite fits together on the side, this is the foundation of our bite. Just like the foundation of a house, it's the most important part of the bite, but it's the part that nobody sees when they're smiling in the mirror. We want to see the front cusp of the upper molar should fit in the groove of the lower molar. Then all the teeth should fit like bricks in a wall. The most important relationship in the mouth is the upper canine tooth fitting between the lower canine and the lower first premolar. The reason that is is because when you shift your jaw side to side when you're chewing your food or when you're clenching or grinding at night, which about 90% of people do, we're gliding off of those teeth and it's helping to protect our jaw joint. So not only is, is the fit and the look of the teeth important from an aesthetic point of view, it's also important from a, a functional point of view. So when we're looking at our family members and we're looking at ourselves and trying to figure out what might be going on, things that you can look for that are issues are bites that are the upper jaw is biting on the inside of the lower jaw. That's what we call a posterior crossbite. We can also look for something called an overjet, which is the upper jaw and the lower jaw being off in this direction. We can look for an underbite, which is a bite that's off in the opposite direction. We can also look for crowding, okay, so lower or upper front teeth that don't have enough space to be straight. Those are the things that you can look for on your, on your younger kids.